Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Wildcats of Kentucky. We've got Kevin McGuffey on the line who joins us on a regular basis to talk UK. And, uh, of course, I would say that um, I'll continue to revel in my ranking of Kentucky football in the top 10 way before anybody else did early last season after they racked up a couple impressive wins against uh, quality opponents like Mississippi State, of course, Florida, and South Carolina. Then they carried that through the rest of the season, and the argument could be made that outside the college football playoff discussion, they were pretty much the most relevant or um, best team along with, let's say, an LSU and a few others, but uh, not too many, maybe Texas, and finished ranked in the top 10. Uh, certainly a ranking they earned uh, after a 10-win season and a bowl win over Penn State. Much of that rested on Benny Snell. If you could name one guy, the name that comes to mind for everybody's Benny Snell. Uh, after that, though, the defense was just ridiculously good. Uh, the defense carried the offense in many situations or carried them long enough for the offense to get its act together in the fourth quarter, get the job done uh, over the likes of Vanderbilt and Missouri and on and on and on. Uh, but of course, Josh Allen, Jordan Jones, Mike Edwards, that group moves on. And what is Kentucky left with for 2019, Kevin? Um that, that's a good question. Um, up front, I think, obviously, you know, starting with Josh Allen, you know, how do you, you know, Kentucky basically has to try to replace, you know, in essence, what many people think probably their best offensive player and best defensive player, if not in school history, at least in the last 40, you know, 40 some years, you know, Art Steele, some old timers, you know, Art Steele was probably the best, would be one of the best ones. But um, yeah, it's, you know, trying to replace them. Um, on the defensive line, the defensive line, I think, is going to be the strong suit of of the team as far as the defensive side of the ball. I think defense, the line and the linebackers are going to be good. The, the biggest question mark is going to be, you know, going to be in the secondary because, you know, they lost the entire secondary. You know, Mike Edwards, Lonnie Johnson, you know, those guys, they're all, you know, Derek Beatty, um, you know, all those guys. You know, two of, them, two of them got drafted. I think they all signed, you know, free agent deals with somebody. And, you um, you know it, that that's going to be the biggest, the, you know, the biggest thing, you know, going forward is what the um, how how quickly the um, how quickly the secondary comes comes together. And um, we've got, um, like I said, if you want to start, we can start with the defensive lines. Like I said, you know, they have three guys. They have really almost seven or eight guys that that are probably going to play a lot this year. Um, right now, you know, the projected starters are, you know, two two seniors, two seniors and a junior. You've got T.J. Carter. Quentin Bohanna and Calvin Taylor, those are all guys who played last year and did, you know, did did really, really well. You've also got, you know, Phil Hoskins, who played a lot last year. Mark Ann McCall, who was, you know, Kentucky's biggest recruit a year ago, who played some, who played some, you know, as a freshman, you know, with the new rules where you can play four games. Um, and then, of course, you have uh, another guy, Cordell Looney, who's a junior. You know, you see all these guys are all up, you know, a lot of these guys are seniors and juniors. And then, of course, you know, the, the wild card, I think, is Josh Paschal. You know, he missed most of last season. For those who may not remember his story, he was, you know, diagnosed with uh, basically cancer in his foot. It was a malignant melanoma and had to have surgery and missed most of the season. But then he came back, came back later in the year and did a really, you know, did a really nice job when he got to play. I think, you know, they've got, um, you know, the, the offense, the defensive line is going to be, especially early on, is going to be counted on a lot to carry the load. Um, up front. And I think, like I said, you know, um, Derek LeBlanc, you know, the coach up front and, and, you know, Brad White, defensive coordinator, you know, those guys, they've got seven or eight guys they can run in and out. And I think they're going to be really, you know, obviously you can't replace Josh Allen, but, you know, these guys are all really good players. And I think, you know, they're going to have time to grow, you know, in another year from what you saw last year. I think it's going to be, like I said, that's going to be the, the strong point of the defense is going to be, is going to be the defensive line. And then if you want to just move on, we can talk about the linebackers too. You know, um, you've got Cash Daniel, you know, Kentucky guy there in the middle, you know, famous, you know, for his uh, his his wrestling and his, uh, you know, after the Florida game last year, after, you know, the Cats finally broke the streak. You've got him. You've got Chris Oates as the inside linebackers. You've got uh, Boogie Watson and Jordan White are the projected, you know, I'm just kind of going by what I think is going to be the projected starters. You know, on the outside linebackers, those are the outside linebackers, and Daniel and Oates are the inside linebackers. And then 
they have several guys, you know, a guy to watch Jared Casey, who's a local, you know, in, in state guy they got from Louisville. He is an incoming freshman. I think he's going to play and I think he's going to do well, you know, and do a lot of really good things this year. Um, and then you also have, you know, at the inside lines, you got Jamin Davis, DeAndre Square, and, and Trey Watkins, um, you know, all guys who played some, you know, played some significant minutes last year. And um, I think any one of them, you know, again, maybe not as, may not be as strong as the, as the front line, but those are guys who I think can definitely play, you know, get in and, and play. And then you move to the, to the, um, to the secondary, as I said, that's going to be the big, you know, the big question marks, you know, safety is they're in pretty good shape. I think, you know, Devontae Robinson, Jordan Griffin, you know, both of those are juniors. They've, um, they played, they played well, they played, you know, last year, um, you know, Griffin played some as a, um, as a nickel, you know, they're looking to see him possibly as a nickel back. He, um, like I said, I think, you know, again, they think they'll get, get some good things from him. And then the corners, the cornerbacks are definitely the question mark. You have, as I said, you lost all of those guys. You know, right now the projected, if you look at the projected depth chart as we're, you know, talking on July 5th, you have Brandon Eccles and Cedric Dort are the two the two guys. And, um, you know, another guy, uh, there's a freshman, MJ Devonshire, who's out of Pennsylvania. Um, he's a guy I think um, could get an opportunity to learn to earn a lot of snaps uh, coming in because he's one of the most highly touted players in that in the class they have this year. And, um, you know, like I said, those two guys, Eccles and Dort are right now listed as the starters, but you've got four or five other guys. You've got Stanley Garner, uh, Jamari Brown, and then Quandre Mosley, all those guys. You know, it's, it's going to it could be a revolving door those first couple of games, you know, and I, as you talked about, I'd watched the uh, your season predictions, you know, the the first – the first three, the first two games, Kentucky should, you know, Toledo. I think Toledo is going to be a tougher game than a lot of people think, just because they're, as you said, they're usually the class, one of the class teams in the MAC, and you know they're very, you know, I think they scored fifty points like more six times last year, so they're really going to put. I think that's going to be a big test for that defense, especially the secondary in that first game, and then you know Eastern Michigan. So they're going to have a couple of games to kind of get their feet, get their feet wet, you know, see who. See who's going to be the players who you know. See who needs work before you hit that you know, as you called it, that brutal, that brutal stretch coming up with Florida. You know, Florida at home at South Carolina and at Mississippi State. And as you said, you know, by the time we hit September, we're going to know a whole lot about what this team, you know, about what this team is going to be. But um, basically, like I said, the the defense, the defensive front line is going to have to carry. I think carry the team, especially early in the season. Yeah, Cash Daniel comes back as not a guy that uh, was a headliner nationally, but for Kentucky fans and SEC fans, they sure knew about him. 84 tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss. And you mentioned uh, Chris Oates, who made some plays in the backfield, the opponent's backfield with three tackles for loss and two sacks. So tons of production gone, but uh, it appears as though capable players ready to take on uh, Kentucky's uh, defensive scheme and uh, move it into 2019 and try to keep this uh, program moving forward. And this, Kevin, is going to be interesting from the process of we see a lot of coaches that are really good coaches take over a program. So they're able to lift a program that's down and put in those building blocks. And that's what we've seen exactly from Mark Stoops. We've seen a pro positive progression each and every year. And once you get to a certain level, though, then it becomes a mammoth lift to try to move it past that or even maintain it. In Kentucky's case, when you talk about winning nine games in the regular season and a bowl win over a top 10 or 15 team in the nation, uh, we'll see if that's the ceiling or if they're able to push through that or at least maintain that to some degree. Oh, no, you're, you're exactly right. And, you know, Coach Stoops, this would be starting his seventh year and he's basically either tied or equaled tied or better his one loss record every year he's been here, you know, went from two games to five to five, to seven, seven, and now 10. Now winning 10 games next this year is going to be, yeah, I don't know. You know, even the most diehard blue tinted glasses, true blue fan, you know, could say, and I know there were some comments you know, on your, your post about the season predictions that said they're going to go 11 and one. They're going to go 10. And, I'm not going to get, you know, I think eight and four is a good. I, I with the schedule they have, if they can pick up at least one, pick off one of those three, with either Florida or South Carolina or Mississippi State, possibly win one of those three. I think 
an eight or nine win season is definitely possible. Um, they lose all three of those. It gets a little more, it gets a little more difficult, but as you said, you know, they've, they've, you know, they spent six years, you know, saying we're building a program, we're building a program, we're building a program. And now last year, you know, it finally came to fruition. And as you said, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens, you know, this year, I don't think we're going to, we don't think Kentucky is going to drop back to, you know, they're not going to go four and eight. They're not going to go, you know, I, I think they safely, you know, safely make a bowl game. And I, I said, I think seven to eight wins, you know, I think seven to eight wins this year would be really good. And I think you're looking at a possible, the next year, maybe another, you know, 10 win, you know, I think 20, 2020 could be another really, really big year. Cause you would have like, you know, a junior, junior and Terry Wilson, um, you know, a junior and Lynn Bowden or, you know, all these guys, um, you know, that, that, that have helped build the program, you know, give them another year, they'll all still be here. So I, I think 2020, I think this is kind of the, for me, this is kind of like the, kind of hold things in place, like a play, not necessarily like a placeholder, you know, you try to get that seven or eight wins, get to a good, you know, a good bowl game. You know, I'm thinking, you know, just off the top of my head, you know, I know Kentucky fans are probably tired of the Music City Bowl, but I think the Music City Bowl was a, you know, a good, you know, probably a good, at least a good start. And then you just go from there, you know, and see, and see where they end up. But, um, but yeah, like to your point, I think, you know, they've got, they've gotten to the program where they want it. Now it's, you know, it's a matter of keeping it there. And that's going to be, you know, this year. And I think especially next year, that's going to be, you know, very interesting to watch. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, uh, checking on uh, Kentucky following a 10 and three top 10 finish, of course, in 2019, 2018. Of course, we're talking 2019 right here with Kevin McGuffey from last word on college football. Please uh, help us build the channel by grabbing the Amazon link in the description this section right below me. And uh, you can help us build the channel by just doing your regular Amazon shopping, just using that link. That's all there is to it. You don't do anything different. Just use that link. Also, we've got uh, a Voice of College Football community that you can join and talk directly with me. Also, an exclusive live stream every week there where I respond to your viewer comments, which are well over 42,000 for this year right now. So thank you so much for the response.